Santa Barbara Baker here with an update to my signature sourdough pizza dough recipe. When I'm making pizza at home, what am I looking for? Pizza is such a personal preference. Don't any, let anybody tell you one style is better than the other. It really comes down to what type of pizza do you like and how to change those variables to design a pizza you enjoy. What kind of pizza do I like? I like a pizza, a nice puffy crust, but a little bit more crispy than say a Neapolitan style. Something that you can pick up a nice chew, but not too chewy, like a New York style, tender. The best of both worlds. That's what I'm trying to create here. Hopefully I can create something for you guys to have delicious pizza at home. Let's start with the flour. I've changed up the flour blend a little bit. Starting off here with 400 grams of double zero flour here. Double zero flour, you hear that term thrown around a lot. It has less to do, it has actually nothing to do with the protein content in the flour. I think that's what a lot of people get confused about. It has more to do with the milling of the flour and the types of wheat that are contained within. Caputo, that's like the classic Italian one. I'm actually using central milling here. It's from the United States. You know, it's kind of a little more American style, but they're modeling it after that Italian style. That saying the milling is excellent. I really like it a lot. We have 400 grams of that. On to the bread flour. I like a mix of double zero and bread flour. But bread flour is another one of those terms you gotta be careful with. Bread flour typically refers to a flour with a higher protein content. That's gonna give us stronger gluten network in our dough, make it easier to stretch, also give some longer lifespan to the dough. And it's great, you know, bread flour is gonna add more chew, but sometimes I feel like it can be too chew. I've toned it back a little bit here to 275 grams. But also, super important here with the bread flour, I'm using central milling flour here, organic flour, it's great stuff, but the protein content can vary wildly by brand. Central milling, we're here at 11.5. That's the same actually as this double zero flour here. King Arthur all-purpose flour is actually 11.7, so higher protein content than this Artisan Baker's Craft Plus from Central Milling. King Arthur bread flour, even higher at 12.7. Caputo at 12.5. So I'll throw these numbers up on SantaBarbaraBaker.com, but this is all things to think about when you're making your dough. You know, stuff like double zero flour, that can, it's gonna handle less flour. All, all this stuff has major effects on your dough. So it's all something to think about and play around. I'm just adding it in here, along with our double zero and bread flour. I like to add something a little interesting to the mix. I've just simplified it here. I'm a really big fan of T85 flour. I'm using the T85 malted here from Central Million, there's other brands out there, but what does T85 mean? It's not a common term. You hear really in the home baker network in the United States, maybe with more with the bread guys or something, but what that's referring to that 85 is the ash content. That's more like the grain you're seeing here. Like when you have a whole wheat, which you just see like a whole wheat flour, that's gonna be even higher than that. The sweet thing about T85 is milled to, you're incorporating more of that full grain in here, but it's milled in a way that we can go a little higher. Is if you put too much whole wheat in your dough, it can cause your dough to rip. You got that flavor in there, but we want to be able to stretch our dough. I have 50 grams of T85. If you don't have T85, I would replace that with some bread flour, maybe cut it down to just like 10 grams of the whole wheat. Play around with it. It's yours to have fun with. I'm gonna add that into our mix here. We'll get this stuff stirring up in my mixer as we move on to our starter. I like to give it a nice little spin in here. You can even do this ahead of time with a whisk. I like to mix up my flour sometimes a night ahead of time, be all ready to go. We want that all nice and perfect. All right, on to the starter. I whipped this thing up last night. Little change from the recipe that I had on my website before. I'm only using 25 grams of the mother culture in here. To that, I added 100 grams of room temperature water, filtered always. Here's the clean OG, and 100 grams of bread flour. Mix that up, let it hang out overnight. Looks like it about tripled. That looks good to me. Pull up my rubber band here, move on to the water. I have 450 gram of room temperature water here. What this is going to leave us with is a 67% hydration down. I feel that's an awesome spot for the home baker. Outside in your little backyard oven, if you have an uni, 
frog box or whatever you might have, or inside on a baking steel or a stove. You know, traditional Neapolitan pizza is actually a lot lower than what I think some people think. More in that high 50s to low 60s when you're using double zero flour, you don't need as much water. And when you're baking in a super hot oven like that, your pizza's cooked really quick. If you have a lot of water, it's gonna take longer to bake. So you don't actually want a super high hydration dough when you're doing a traditional Neapolitan. My style though, I like a little longer bake. We're in the uni, I like to bake around three to four minutes, 67%, you know, that's a nice, that might be even a little on the high side. The super high hydration is great for your pan pizzas and things like that, but there's no way some sort of badge of awesomeness, so play around it, see what you like. Going super high is definitely not always the solution. I feel like the mid 60s is a great spot. I'm just working the water in here. It all mixed up. I left a little bit in there because I don't want to make a mess. I'm just incorporating any little bits in here. This is looking pretty good to me. All right, I'm gonna stop my mixer here. And for the sake of not making a mess, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna pull the whole thing out. If you're slick, you can just kind of dump it in as it's mixing. That might even be better. I'm going to add the water in here along with, we'll just get those last little bits of the starter mixed up. I think the starter here, we're about 15% starter of the whole mix here. That'll give us a nice, we're going for a little slow rise here. We'll let this rise for most of the day. This dough can be used the same day or let it go overnight as a cold ferment. Going to load this right into the mixer, put this straight up. For this first part here, all we're looking for is to have the water incorporated in the dough. We're not looking for it to get super smooth or anything at this point. After all the water is incorporated, I'm going to cover it up, let it hang out for 25 minutes. We'll come back, we'll add the salt and the oil, let this thing finish mixing. Oh yeah, one more thing. If you watched my videos before, you might have seen I was doing all my mix by hand. I'm using the mixer here. You know, do what you want. Let's take a speed. My time constraints are a little bit more here, so I've been into the mixer. It makes a great product too, but use your hands if you're like, you know, let this thing keep mixing up, get it covered. I'll see you back in 25. We're back after 25 minutes. That 25 minutes is just approximate. There's plenty of wiggle room in there. We just want some time for the flour, the water, and the starter to hang out, get happy, just let that all that stuff absorb before we add anything else to our dough. And around here, we don't add much to our dough, but we are gonna add some salt. I have 25 grams of salt. I'm using kosher salt today. Sea salt is another great choice. 25 grams on this recipe, that's gonna put us about at that 3% range, which I, at 3%, which is that three high two end, I feel is a really good spot for pizza dough. Gonna start getting this mix up. I like a well seasoned dough. And the salt also is important. It doesn't just season your dough, it also adds to, it affects the rise of your dough, and also some of the stretching ability. You definitely want salt in there. We'll get this started and get it mixed up. I almost mixed my dough look, it threw me up, but we're back in business here. And moving on to the oil. On my revamp, I almost thought I considered it. I tried it out. Leaving the oil out completely. You absolutely do not need oil in your pizza dough. But oil can bring some good elements. I feel like with a novice pizza maker, sometimes you think adding oil will add crispness to your dough. It absolutely does not. In fact, it does just the opposite. And I'm shooting for a nice crispy exterior on my crust. So I like to go really low on the oil. I'm about 1% here. I like to stay under 2%. Oil, though, is not all bad. Remember, pizza, it's all about getting that pizza, baking up that pizza that you really like. So oil can bring some great things to the game. In fact, it will make your pizza a little more tender, softer on the inside in there. It also will add some life to the pizza. How in the form of preservation, a little oil in there will enable you to, like, say you're giving your pizza to a friend, they can refire that thing and it'll bake up pretty nice. Of the 10 grams of extra virgin olive oil here, my salt looks like it's incorporated. And also, what a big thing here on my revamp. You might have seen before on the last iteration of this dough, I had three mixes. I simplified it down to two using the mixer here. Actually, with this oil in here, we can just keep the mixer going. Even more simple. I like to actually do it as it's going. Be careful here. Just adding a nice little 
stream of the oil in. It's going to go slowly here, incorporating it as it goes. You know, see the dough might start to break up a little bit as you add the oil. Not a big deal. But once this is all incorporated, I'm just going to go for it here. When you do it, I might go a little slower. I'm just speeding it up for the sake of on camera. Here. But we'll be all good. I mean, this stuff here, we're making at home. You shouldn't trip too hard on this stuff. After this oil gets mixed in pretty well here, I'm not seeing any more kind of going on the side here. I feel like go a little bit longer. I'm going to crank the mixer up about halfway or even pushing up to a little bit higher speed. Now let it go. Is it ready here? Let's just call it. We'll say it's good. I'm going to start pumping this thing up. I'm going to let this thing mix. I might even crank it a couple more notches. We'll let it go six to eight minutes so the dough is looking nice and smooth. Our dough is looking nice and smooth and clearing. And by clearing, what do I mean? The dough is picking up from the sides there. All good things looking like this dough is nice and mixed up. We went about seven minutes here. Dough's looking a little bit sticky, but that's to be expected at this point. Now we're gonna get this dough ready to go in for its firm for firm first bulk, excuse me, for its bulk fermentation. And what I like to do before that is just give my dough weigh it one last time. We're shooting for 350 gram dough balls on this uh, dough recipe. I'll give you a nice uh about 14 inch pizza, a great size, I think, in the Unicoda 16. Look at that dough, looking really nice. And all the little pieces here, and that's why it's important to weigh one more time. You always kind of have a little bit of dough stuck on places. Do your best to clean up, but we're just making pizza at home here, so we're not stressing too much. Look at that dough, real sticky and wet now, but we're gonna let it hang out. It'll be all good. I'm just gonna use my hands here, kind of free it up from the bottom of our bowl. I'm gonna, Put it right into a glass bowl here that I've lightly oiled. I like a glass bowl or a plastic, something see-through so I can keep an eye on that dough. See how it's rising. You can't see it, you can't pay attention to what's going on. It's looking real good here. I'm gonna get the dough covered up completely and into the donut. Shooting for, I'm gonna say about four hours, but this really depends on your environment. If you're in a warm environment, it can go really quick. Cold, it might take a longer time. I like to go, you know, as slow as possible, but four hours is about a good time to shoot for, about mid 60s. Get that covered up in the donut, but I'm gonna keep an eye on it, looking for it to about to double. At that point, I'll meet you back up here. We'll divide the dough up into some dough balls. We're back after five hours of bulk fermentation. I mentioned four hours, but you know, my day, some things changes. I ended up having to go five at four. It looks pretty good, but five, I'm not tripping. You can see it's all perked up there. Looking nice. I wrote myself a little love note on the top here. Just noting the time that I started the bulk fermentation and also the weight. I'm gonna start portioning up the dough balls now. Start by removing the lid here, the plastic I just had on there. Lids even better. I start with dusting my work surface here. I'm just using a piece of marble. Wood is also great. And I'm gonna hit the top of my dough here. I'm gonna pull this whole big piece of dough out after our bulk fermentation. Being careful to preserve all the fermentation that took place, making sure your hands are floured there. If it's feeling a little sticky, I'm just freeing it up from the bottom here. And out, look at that, it feels so nice and light, some air in that dough, the fermentation taking off all things we really like. I'm gonna put my bowl here onto my scale. Always weigh your shiz, you know, but otherwise, if you don't have a scale, just divide it up into four. This recipe should leave you with about a 350 gram dough ball. You know, you might lose a little bit of dough somewhere in the process, but that's what you're shooting for. This looks a little bit maybe sticky here on the top. Gonna hit it with a little bit more flour before I portion off my first dough ball. Here we're cutting in whenever you're doing it on camera. Probably never get it. I feel like this one, I can already tell it seems light. 312, all right, I'm gonna pull off a little chunk of dough here. See if we get it on the second one. 347, that's actually good because mine calculated out to be 347. That's you know close enough for 350 as far as I'm concerned today. All right, how to form your dough ball? I just get it down onto the work surface here, folding it one, two, three, then up into my hands, making sure I get it nice and smooth there. 
Almost like if you've ever made fresh mozzarella or some of the dumplings, you almost have the same kind of motion. They're forming it into a nice ball, making sure that I don't capture any too huge, big like air pocket type things in there. You don't want you with the natural fermentation of dough, not a big hole inside your dough. That's looking pretty good, making sure to seal it off there. It's feeling really nice. There's already quite a bit of fermentation taking place on this one. I'm gonna keep an eye on it. Like I said, I want it a little bit an hour longer than I really want to, but it's going to be okay. This is looking nice. So my dough recipe, you can bake this off today, which I'm gonna bake one dough ball today. Just put this one onto a lightly oiled uh, plate I have here, and I have a nice little lid here. Get this one covered up. We'll put this into the donut. Let it ferment, bake off. I think it's gotta be a mark tonight. But the rest of my dough balls, what I'm gonna end up doing here is I have just a simple half sheet pan that I've lightly oiled with some olive oil. But my three edition of dough balls, this recipe makes four dough balls at 350 grams. Get that onto the sheet pan, cover it up, nice little lid that fits here. Put both the single dough ball I'm gonna fire off tonight, and my three additional balls I'm gonna cold ferment into the donut. Let those hang out. You know, it really depends on your environment. Keep an eye on those dough balls. Warmed up a little bit here today, caught me off guard. My fermentation's speeding up. So I wanna keep an eye on it. I'm thinking for those ones, I'm gonna cold ferment. Definitely wanna check in the next couple hours. I'm thinking maybe three, four into the fridge. Dough ball, I'm baking off tonight. I'm not tripping on too hard. Just keep an eye on it. You know, if it overproofs a little bit, not too big a deal. It should taste excellent. Hope you guys enjoyed this update to my dough recipe. Maybe you learned something, maybe not. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And if you have any additional questions, Check out the full recipe and all the details up on SantaBarbaraBaker.com. There's a lot I covered in here, and all those little measurements, things like that. You'll find them on there, so you don't have to jot down any notes as you watch this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Check me out on Instagram. I'm Santa Barbara Baker on there. I love you all. Keep dreaming about pizza, making pizza. Keep those pizza dreams alive. One love.